I do like a little coffee with my creamer. Good morning, fish heads. Jen Cravassi, Jekyll Bates. It is, is it hump day? It's hump day. It's Wednesday, April the 21st, I want to say. Um, 2021. Welcome to the show. I've got so many pieces to show you. I was going to film yesterday just to do the shop update. And one thing led to another. I ended up doing some stuff with Buca and then um, painted a few pieces. I had to cut, finish up a couple of orders. So Brian Servel or Servel, um, his order is hanging and I'm going to show that on the next show and tell. I've got um, stuff. Okay, so we're going to talk about D-Lamb just for a second. Um, in this video today, we're going to talk about some vintage pieces and uh, some addresses that that I just want to kind of walk you guys through as far as how to take care of certain situations that may come up, especially if you're doing swim baits. It happens to everybody, especially with DLAM. It's in prep issues normally because, like I've said before, these little guys, um, they use mold release to pop these things out of the mold when they're poured. And then it takes a good bit of prep in order to get them right before you can paint them. Sometimes that mold release will still leach out even after you have prepped it. And when that happens, it's okay. It's par for the course. It happens to a lot of us. It happens to me less frequently now because I expect it. Um, so I know how to properly address that with the baits. It's just extra. So a lot of times, if I think that there might be an issue, I learned a little trick from probably the inventor of paint on baits, Bill Barton, the guy himself. He says to go ahead and prime a bait and let it dry. And then take a piece of masking tape or duct tape, stick it to your primer, and rip it back. If your paint does not come off, then you're good to go. So that's a little tip for everybody. Um, and I've kind of gotten myself in the habit a lot of times just by feeling, touching, I can figure out what's going on with these baits. Um, and I couldn't when I started painting like years ago. I could not figure it out because I didn't know. Um, so hopefully that's a little helpful tip for you guys this morning and your tips and tricks. Um, yeah, I know. It's before 9 o'clock when I'm shooting this. My hands are already gummed up from just junk here in the shop. I try to get in early when, I, when I'm when i shooting. So this is a respray for a customer. And, and if you get a customer that's like, man, I got some D-Lamb issues, or they may not know to call it D-Lamb, but um, the paint has chipped away or flaked off, do, do yourself a favor. Just say, hey, you know what? Ship it back to me. I'll cover that cost. I'll cover the return shipping and I'll repaint it for you absolutely free. And then make sure that you super, super prep it. Um, sometimes I can prep, prime, seal it, and then paint it, reseal it, and then seal it a bunch of times and make sure that you have your, your clear coat pulling onto the side because everything you can do to help keep that paint on there is going to be aces in the eyes of your client. So that's my little helpful tip. I know it took me three minutes and three and a quarter minutes to get through that, but just a word to the wise, don't fret it. Um, take your lumps and just redo it for your customer and you'll be better for it. So I do have a lot of pieces to show you guys this morning. We're going to get started with now that we've talked about the DLAM issues and how to, and thank you, Bill Barton for that awesomely helpful tip. So if you guys missed that, if I talk through it quickly, which I have a tendency to do when I've had some coffee, take a bait, prime it after you've prepped it. So prep it and then prime it. And then once that primer dries, take a piece of masking tape or duct tape and stick it to your bait and rip it back. If the paint stays on, you're good to go. If it flakes off, you've got more prep issues ahead. So just take that little extra tip, and that one's from Bill Barton himself. Thank you, Bill, and I appreciate that heads up. And that and, uh, we talked about that when Mike had his um, event here at Bullshad Storefront, and a bunch of us got together. TJ Hatfield was here. It was awesome to see him, and Bill and his wife, Chris, and just a few of us got together and talked. I've talked to Kelly Barefoot since then, and everybody goes through those issues so if it happens to you don't feel bad it's it's just something that you can overcome and it's easy to overcome as long as you know how to prep the bait right so this little guy i've been painting dragons for oh gosh um three or so years only because it started out as a, a game of thrones junkie type deal and i absolutely love 
dragons and that whole thing. And I, I, I'm sure I get poked at and funned at from a few people. Pomp pompous dragons, what, whatever. It's cool. Um, I really thin-skinned is not one of my shortcomings. So it's cool. Love all y'all. And it's all in good fun. This is a bullshad herring and with dragon scales on it and hand painted eyes. Let's see if I can get that. There we go. Those marbled, beautiful hand painted eyes. And these are the original eyes that come on the bullshad. But just in uh, hand painted that black pupil on the eye and I don't know if the camera does it justice but there is um, some really cool iridescence going on with this and yep I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag and show you why this paint is exceptionally shiny so I am I promise you it's coming I just need the time to sit and go through it because it's a lot of information for you guys with paints but um, there is a series of paints from France, and if you're familiar with some of them, they are Liquitex paints. It's an acrylic ink, but holy smokes, are they shiny, and they're beautiful. I highly recommend it. You can shoot them through an airbrush. You just need to rinse it out with a little bit of 91% alcohol after you're done shooting and before the paint dries in your cup. So these things are really good. They're super liquidy. This is probably going to run, run a little bit long. I've got family coming in from Arkansas today. I'm just going to show you what this stuff looks like. It's so pretty. Um, and it's so shiny. And it works really, really well. And it is a great alternative you guys can see how much mica they put into those and it is it's crushed mica that gives you that iridescence so just something that you might want to give it a shot it's called liquitex acrylic ink they they come in the metallic series which is copper gold silver there's a pearlescent white that comes with it and uh, just a few other colors. And then it comes with a straight white, straight black accent. Um, a lot of times, as I've shown you on other videos, if I'm doing types of iridescence or mica, I'm gonna put a black background because it seems to pop off of that a lot better than if you do a straight white background. But just something to, to play around with, something to, to look at as you are discovering new ways to paint. But yeah, it shows up with clear coat really really well now that's not this is not just the copper I've got some pearl orange like a pearl I think it pearl tangerine from createx is mixed in with this as well just to give it a little bit of extra brightness because that copper is dark and then I've got some reds and pearls and stuff in there anyways but you really want the fire in dragons to pop off of that um, I'm sure I'm going to get lots of questions where you teach us how to do this spray. Uh, you probably already know this is less difficult than it looks. Uh, basically, it's a couple of stencils that you can hand cut yourself and some mesh and some overspray and you get yourself a dragon. So I may or may not teach it. It has been one of my signature patterns for a few years now. I've got some older Insta. If you scroll through my Instagram page, at Jekyll424, you can see it there. I'm um, going back. I think I did one that I actually published a year ago. These Whopper plopper, Ploppers, River to Sea. I don't, I don't paint the knockoffs, folks. Everybody asks where I get my blanks. These are legit River to Sea Whopper Ploppers in the 90 size and then I gave her a bonus size I think it's her Carmen Kiplin if it's not I sincerely apologize but I just got that from your name um, it's a six piece going out this is the Hulk you can see those traditional river to sea eyes and then we have a gill and these are dry and these are still curing um, so I'm holding these, not with kid gloves on, or kid gloves, but 
Um, I'm holding them loosely because they still have just a little bit of drying time. This is that Ultimate Gel. Got a warm mouth. You can see there's just a little bit of an ear flap on the warm mouth. I got a good bit of depth portrayed on that as well. And then we've got, now some people like them. I'm getting ready to show off on the next one, Brian's Crankdown Crawl on a Scots. Um, that is out drying now. That's going to make the next video. But this is a molting crawl that was requested. Just a little bit of the microdot stencil just to kind of enhance the scaling but tried to get it as accurate as I could for the smaller pieces and then some good shading to give it a little bit of depth on there as well. A Mahi Mahi, I love doing these. These are very simple, but they're almost like a sexy shad pattern. And I think they do very, very well, especially in stained waters. Um, so good on you for the selections that you wanted on these Whopper Ploppers. And again, thanks for your unfailing kindness and patience as I transition through trying to get a good routine down and keep everybody happy here at Bull Shad. This is the Dire Wolf, the last of the six piece. A lot of silver. And again, Liquitex, folks, it's really good. Really good. Shoots very well through an airbrush. It's very thin, so there's no need usually to reduce it. It's not going to clog your airbrush as long as you're not using something that's very, very inexpensive. And I'm not going to say cheap because everybody has to start somewhere. But you can see all the little particles and the very silvery chrome type appearance. It's more like a brushed silver on these. And then some real cool, looks like you can peel it apart in that dire wolf with a little bit of a red throat. Love doing that as well. Oh, we've got just a couple of these. You guys have seen these before, the goggle eye. And then I got some glitter effects going on, this brushed rat. One of my favorites. Maybe got a little bit too much glitter on the face, but that's okay. The fish don't care. You know, there's a dilemma, beauty versus function in baits. And beauty does sell, but I have, I have a propensity to agree with guys like RM, um, other guys that are like, you know, it's just, it's a reactionary bite. You really, fish can't discern all of the different shades and patterns. They do very well in clear water discerning that stuff. But for the most part, I have a tendency to agree with guys like that, where it's just like, you know, pretty is pretty and it's going to sell but it's not absolutely critical to your paint job. These are all finished up and ready to go. This is part of an order as well. And I've got these in this color and I've got them in this molting crawl that I showed off on Instagram the other day. I actually think that the photograph on Instagram doesn't do it justice. This is just a really cool, subtle color combination. It's not a brown. It is yellow and the blue bled into it and a little bit of black. So it's just blue and yellow. The green is there because it's blue and yellow because that's the color that when you shoot heavy wet on wet, a lot of times it'll bleed into one another, which is a, you can do it and it looks good. And then just a little bit of darker on the belly. And then I did a version of it with a little bit of flash. And everybody asks how I get this stuff, how this effect. So you can pop glitter on there, but you can also spread a little mica, crushed mica powder in between clear coats. While the first layer of clear coat is still just a little bit tacky. You guys, I'm full of tips and tricks today because this may be the last one I'm able to get for the week. I've got, again, family, the ants are coming. I have an ant problem, but it's a good problem to have with these ants. They're wonderful. Um, so Kay and Lynn are coming from Arkansas to visit out here in Georgia. I'm going to take a couple of days off and show them the sights and enjoy the time with them because time with your family is precious. 
and I wish I had more of it, but I just don't. So I'm going to enjoy while they're here. But this is just between two coats of, mica, of uh, clear coats, just a little bit of gold mica, just brushed on with my fingertips. Kind of rub it around the bait and then dunk it again. And you want the first layer dry enough to touch, but sticky enough or tacky enough, soft, I guess is the best way to, to say that. You want it soft enough to where this is going to not come off when you dunk it again. So just give it a good rub and you're good to go. And then last but certainly not least, I've got two more groupings to show you guys. I got into it a little bit. Now I probably should have given you some before and after shots, but these are uh, restoration baits for a dear friend back in Arkansas. And the only reason that I have put stuff on this lip is because the lip is old, so I'm really kind of sealing it together. It's not going to hurt it. It's not going to mess with function. I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera. But these are, you can't get them anymore. And there was quite a bit of damage just from fishing the mess out of them for years and years and years. I'm getting ready to send these back home. They've been wood puttied, sealed again, then painted, and then sealed again with an extra layer of seal to hold in that putty. And yes, it's a, there's a couple of divots in there. I had to strip it all down, but there were chunks out of one of these with a little, like a chunk of wood. So I wood puttied and it kind of sunk in, but these are very cool old baits wood and then nice and shiny rock hard not going anywhere ready to fish and live a few more years and i hope he catches a really good sack out of these he's a tournament angler so very very happy and these are all he said keep them the the way that they were the original so I certainly did that for you, Mike, and uh, I certainly hope that you get lots of life out of these years to come. So that was the restoration project. I didn't do a step-by-step -step video, folks. I have filmed a lot, have not had a whole lot of time to edit, but this was just not one of those projects. I had, it had been a labor of love for a couple of months, just stripping it down and stripping it down. I've got a bunch of these. These are going to Kevin Wilson as part of the prize pack for the Super Bass Hole Tournament that I showed you guys on the spray session that I did for these. But this is part of the finished product. And as you can see, there's beautiful jets and eyes in here. We're just going to walk you around a couple of these baits real quick. I know we're pushing 20 minutes, but I'm cool with that because I wanted to give you just a little bit of extra love and appreciation since I'm probably going to take a couple of days off to be with my family. Love these one knocks. Man, they're good. So these are tree frog patterns that Kevin requested. Love doing stuff for Kevin. He's so awesome. And he puts on one heck of a tournament um, with his buddies David and Lou. It's Northwest Bass Holes. It is the Super Bass Hole online tournament. You, too, can get in on that. Go to my spray session video and pull those links out and uh, go talk to them. So cool. So that is just about all the news. It's fit to print. I've got one more to show you. That's going to get more coating. This is the absolute finished product. This is how they're going to look when they go to him. The hand done feathered treble, a bigger belly hook, because that really makes a difference. You might not think it does, but it does. Bigger belly hook is going to weight it more properly, and it really swings that. I mean, you get a really awesome action with just a little bit of hook finessing and finagling. Play around with it. Play around with different hook sizes. Look at those eyes. Shoo, buddy. Jets and lure eyes. And then this last but not least, we're showing you this next pattern. And I don't know if you can see the gold underneath, but there's that Liquitex. Ding dang, it's beautiful. I love Liquitex. 
We've got um, just the traditional bluegill. These are Mike Buca's eyes. This is the seven inch glide. It's not the baby. It's the full size seven inch glide, gill glide from Bullshad. See that gorgeous, gorgeous shimmy. But these are his eyes that I did not tape over, decided that I was going to give it a little bit more of that reddish bluegill look, and then shot the pupils with an airbrush. But man, that iridescence on this. Can you see? I don't know if the camera's picking it up because I've got a bit of a glare but just tons of iridescence in this pattern. One of my faves, save the best for last. I really have enjoyed doing, you can see that, almost like flake mica, but it's not. It's a secret it's stampy. But when this thing glides through the water, whoo, buddy, look out. So that, folks, is all the news that's fit to print. Thank you so much for hanging out on the channel. I know we ran long, but I wanted you guys to have a nice long one for the weekend because I'm going to take a couple of days off, spend it with my aunts, Lynn and Kay. I'm so happy that you're coming to Georgia, uh, my, my down-home fam from Arkansas, down on the farm. Have a fantastic rest of your week. I will see you on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates at Bullshad Studios.